emptying out my room and emptying out my room and looking at all of the items that I've acquired over the past four years, choosing what I want to give away, choosing what I want to keep. It's all kind of reminded me that I am the ultimate container for my life and the things that I want and my desires. And if I don't speak or act or do the things that I really want to do, all of these things stay contained. They stay in the same place for forever. They don't change. And I appreciate and want change. I want new things, new people, new experiences, new moments of awe. And I'm willing to pack everything up and go out into the world and figure out what is next. And it's a life skill that I hope to never get rid of. Okay, so it is the 24th. I don't know what day it is. What day is it? I'm literally packing up everything and putting it into storage. So I need to put my clothes into bags that are going into storage. I need to take down this table, take down the rest of the photos in here. Um, and then I'm basically done. So I'm gonna start on that. I'm wondering if I should do laundry of the clothes I'm putting into storage. I might try to do a quick load because I feel like that's the smartest thing to do. I'm here. Painting of my mom and dad. That's your mom and dad? Yeah. Oh, Again, oh, and I have the address. 401. Working, I do a little pack. Chilling. Moving crew. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. We did it! We did it, Jeff! I need to stop saying that. Fuck them. Fuck the fucking state. Publication copy. So, um, it's, it's soft cover. It's gonna come ah, out soft cover. What is this called again? The what kind? Galley. Galley. What does that mean? It's like the pre. Um, do you want to try to move the mattress in my car without making it feel better? I feel like it'll be okay. Yeah. You're like just Did you see now. this before he sent it? Yeah, yeah. I don't, it's been. Okay, so it's before 7 a.m. My friend Eli's gonna pick me up. Um, last night was really good. I went to a karaoke competition. I saw a bunch of friends. It was actually emotional in the exact right way. I cried a few times. I sang. I... Do I feel ready? Yes and no. Um, last night made it more real. And... <sighs> We're going to France. Okay, so it's a beautiful day here. I just got out of the house. I'm going to walk to a cafe. I think I'm going to walk to Diesel Cafe, which has coffee, bagels. I just want a little snack. If I have some time, I'm going to sit down to write. But uh, I just kind of wanted to show you the neighbor, the houses around this neighborhood because for some reason they're giving me San Francisco vibes. And I want to show you and you let me know what you think. Take yas. <laughs> oh 
All right, hello YouTube. It is the 31st. Wow, 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 wow. It's the 31st. I leave to go to France later today, and I just wanted to kind of sit down and talk about why it's really been important for me to move and to think about it and to unpack. Because I know I've talked about this in some of my other reflections related to moving, but I just kind of wanted to have a one video that kind of talks about this. But um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Prince Shakur. I am a author. My first book is coming out this October. It's called When They Tell You To Be Good. I'm a freelance journalist, a YouTuber, podcast host, basically an artist. Um, and I grew up in Ohio. I went to university in Ohio. After graduating from college, I moved to Seattle. I lived there for about a year. I went to traveling solo for the first time, and then I moved back to the U.S. And then I... What did I do after that? I went to the Philippines at the end of 2017, moved back to the U.S., lived in Cleveland for about a year, and then went to France for three months, and then moved to Columbus. And that was four years ago, and now I'm moving out of Columbus. I'm going to travel in Europe this summer, and I'm planning to move in the late summer. And I've been talking to like a few of my friends who are also nomadic or also have just led really cross-cultural lives and have been in a lot of spaces like my friend Eli. And I was talking with him and someone else recently and we were kind of talking about like why certain people are more comfortable. And we were talking about why certain people are more comfortable in nomadic lifestyles, why certain people feel the desire to travel, to move around, to kind of adopt this adaptability. And it's really strange because there are kind of two veins that I kind of think about. One is a readiness or a relationship with change. And the other for me is to questioning whether or not people really know me. And I'll start with the first one and then go into the second one. A readiness or uh, having a relationship with change. I feel like people that have really stable lives or grew up in really stable homes tend to lean more towards stability. And to me, that's because you have a, a very long-standing relationship with stability, whether it's physical stability, housing instability, emotional instability, emotional stability. Um, there are different forms of stability. And I feel like for me, growing up, I had parents that loved me, but I also grew up in a dysfunctional household and me coming out and lots of trauma around a lot of those family experiences. And I experienced a lot of change from age 12 to 17 and then in college and then after college being queer and coming out and sort of feeling like there was this detachment from my family at a very young age, either because of homophobia or because at some point I realized like not everyone gets what they want, not everyone gets a family that completely understands you and that is just a reality. And so my task became how do I go out into the world and find the family and find the things that I want. And I think my relationship to change really started in that way where I knew that I had to adapt in my personal social settings in order to get the things that I wanted or to feel at home, to feel safe, to feel connected. And that was like a big transition and period of change for me. And then in college again, I had to change a lot. I adapted to going to a PWI, I became radicalized. After college, I had to figure out what I wanted to do as an adult. How do I express my politics? Do I want to be a labor organizer? Do I want to teach English abroad? Do I want to be a writer? And in all of the places that I've traveled, I've always had to adapt, change, be uncomfortable, especially being gay and black. And so I feel like for me, change is a necessary tool of survival because not all environments are safe to me, not all environments are nourishing to me, and not all environments give me the things that I want. And that is something to be really aware of because, and I think for me, it's a big question of like the kinds of nourishment that I think and know that I need moving forward. I want to feel romantic about my life. I want to take chances. I want to be out in the world and challenge myself. And I think in spaces where I'm with a lot of people that know me and like readily know me and we've known each other for like a few years, I feel like there is this kind of 
And I think it's like also a double consciousness thing. Like you learn to operate in a way that is based on what people expect from you or you operate in a way that protects yourself due to the lack of like extreme or deep or intimate social nourishment. And so in Columbus, a lot of the times I found myself going to parties and feeling kind of bored or hanging out with people and thinking like, how do we get to like the deeper part of what this friendship or process is after all these things that we've been through? And that's something that I think is fine, but the better relationships in my life don't really mimic that process. And I think it's important to understand what you need and to honor it. And I want more dynamic relationships. I want more romance. I want, and I want to challenge myself. I, I, I was talking to a friend, like going through your first big relationship and being fearful that you won't be loved again. And I feel like a really big insecurity of mine in Columbus was being black and queer and not feeling like there were many people on a romantic level that I could connect to. Living in Columbus kind of really triggered that part of me that was just like, am I gonna find someone here? Am I gonna spend the next however many years that I live here single? And I think it's also, but if you're a queer person in a lot of straight space, in a lot of straight spaces, what am I gonna find? And so I feel like one real challenge for myself is to continuing to find those queer spaces in that queer family and the places where I feel like the more subversive or radical or not heteronormative and straight parts of me are taken in and celebrated. And I, and I found that in Columbus, I organized with a black queer collective, but I think since leaving that group, there are other desires and things that I feel and want and need. And for this next chapter, I'm just really excited to challenge myself and feel and experience things Within yourself and with other people with intimacy and power and I think maybe that's like a sense of eroticism is what I'm looking for like a sense of sensuality in the moment by moment or the experiences that I have and I don't know I really want to meditate on this more and think about what that looks like or feels like or what kind of exercises or process or rituals like I'm making a bucket list <laughs> of things that I want to do um, and it's just wild, it's wild to think about, but I really, it kind of feels like a breath of fresh air in a way, and even moving ahead when I know things are uncomfortable or scary, I know I can look back at this or other things that I've talked about and kind of, so that's my TED talk for today. Um, time to go to France, again. James Baldwin said he came to France to save his life, and in some ways maybe I did too. In 2016, I came to France for the first time because I wanted to save a life that I knew was possible. A life of deep love, radical politics, and knowing myself as a writer, or the writer that I could be. And just like Baldwin did, and so many other black writers, I find myself in another country once again. Welcome to France. We're here. <laughs>